At Tough Fruit, all six national championships still up for grabs. Fired up drivers and crews, and a new innovative spectator area just 10 kilometers from the finish. That's what the 2008 Toyota Dealer 400 in Leidenberg and Pumalanga on October the 10th and 11th offers. The seventh and penultimate round of the APSA Off-Road Championship will be more spectator friendly than ever before, while teams will be impressed with a route loud that boasts new roads, 50% of which they've never turned a wheel in anger on before. Off-road enthusiasts can certainly count on these new sections to entertain and highlight the tight racing that has been a hallmark of the 2008 season. Chief organizer, the wily and experienced Vili Dupassi of the South African Motor Club, has a few nice surprises and ups and downs in store for the drivers and their faithful navigators, which includes some uncompromising terrain and very dry testing countryside. Off-road fans from Mpumalanga, Limpopo and Gauteng, who always undertake the journey to see the Toyota Dealer 400 up close, will find that it's even more spectator-friendly than in previous years due to a brand new innovation. A large and major spectator and VIP area approximately 10 kilometers from Leidenberg on the Roos Senecon Road, where the cars will whiz by four times. At the end of Loop 1, crews will from there then head for the designated service park at the Leidenberg Rugby Club. Another new idea which the organizers have presented is that the 75km prologue on Friday to determine start positions for the race proper will not form a part of the main route. The prologue will start 6km from Leidenburg Toyota on the Dahlstrom Road. The route is a tough one. It will leave drivers, navigators and their service crews exhausted at the end of the two days of competition. The first of the two loops will again run in the Roosinicol area. This section is almost 160 kilometers long and takes in some spectacular new areas with breathtaking scenery, particularly in the vicinity of the Walkersons Resort near the trout fishing haven, Dolstrom. The second loop will once again include the daunting, tight, twisty and turny forest sections in the vicinity of the famous, or should that be infamous, Long Tom Pass. This loop will start with a short racing section before a decontrol that will take crews into the forests for a truly tough 145 km section. For Toyota, motor racing has been a great factor in establishing a brand on the local scene. The history uh, in motorsport with Toyota comes from the brand image. Um, it was one of the things that actually established Toyota in this country. And if you ask anybody about uh, Toyota in off-road or rallying, they will immediately associate the brand. And that is why, as far as I'm concerned, it is very important that we continue that heritage and that we continue with the brand building that it does. Um, you know, two or three of the things that we are very uh, proud of is what we call QDR, and that's quali quality, durability, and reliability. Those are the pillars of the brand. And I think racing, and especially off-road, as well as rallying, proves that, because it's in those sports that you actually prove how, you know, the durability of your brand, of your vehicles, the quality of your vehicles, and the reliability of your vehicles. And obviously, motorsport is, for, is a good venue for us to, uh, in the case of Hilux, for instance, to bring forward the toughness, the legendary toughness of Hilux. And that is part of our whole advertising and uh, communications uh, strategy. How does Toyota go about putting that all out there? It's obviously done on many fronts, like the dealers, for instance. Okay, when we, when we do a motorsport program, we obviously involve all the different sections of Toyota in it. And from, you know, from, from it's, it's, it's not just PR, it's also communications and marketing and also uh, advertising. And our dealers have a major role to play because in the end, they are our agents. They are the people that actually sells the brand. Uh, and that is where people go to actually get their vehicle from the showroom floor. So for us, we need to have our dealers on board. They must understand what we're trying to do. They must understand the message that we want to create and we want them involved in this whole process. Because in the end, if they don't buy into this, then we are not gonna get the message through to the, the customer. Toyota is setting the pace in the manufacturer's championship. The privateers have come to the party as far as this is concerned. We're in a fortunate position. We are leading the Manufacturers' Championship, I think by 40 points or something like that. And the reason for that is that we not only have our formal, uh, you know, call it the Manufacturers' Team, 
we also have privateer teams. And that is part of the whole package, that the way that we run our motorsport, is to get the privateers involved and help them and make sure that you know, they can compete at the highest level, uh, that they have vehicles that are competitive. Um, and by doing so, normally we pick up a lot of points through the privateers that other teams don't. So, you know, from, from that angle, yes, it, 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 it's definitely worthwhile doing it this, it this way around. Um, but um, I think off-road this year has been fantastic because of the competitiveness of it. Um, yes, Nissan is still tops, but I think Ford and us has come much closer. Um, and it's just a question of time. I mean, we've had a couple of victories. Uh, Mark has done a good job uh, in the Eastern Cape, for instance. Um, it's been a very close call at some stages. I mean, I remember Sugar Belt, it was very, very close. Uh, also in, in, in the Toyota 1000, I mean, Mark was right up there until the end. So, yes, I think we've got a good series. Um, and I think it needs to stay like this and be competitive because that is what makes it the spectacle that it is and that's what makes it, uh, 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 you know, popular uh, among the, the public. The competitiveness in off-road is scintillating and in the production vehicle championship the fans can expect a battle of epic proportions. In fact, the championship contenders will be chewing their nails right down to the quick in Leidenberg. There are only six points that separate the top three drivers in the SP class standings. The dices are rolling and no one knows how they will fall. The reigning champion Duncan Fossen, a fire engine red Sassel Nissan Navara, leads the championship by only four points from former champion Neil Woolridge in the factory Ford Racing Ranger. Four-time champion Hannes Schroblein, a second works Nissan, is in turn just two points adrift and that spells a look over the shoulder drive for stablemate Foss and the Ford veteran. In the co-drivers championship, the battle is just as tight. Kenny Schultamo, who shares the cab of the Ford with Woolridge, leads Nissan Joan Moore, who rides alongside the crafty Schrobler, by a scant two points. Then, of course, there's a situation brought about by overseas travel commitments, which have twice seen Foss's co-driver, Ralph Pitchford, having to miss events so far this season. He is 23 points back. And don't forget, the organizers have come up with a wicked plan to make it even more interesting. Teams are obliged to drop one out of the eight race-long series in the points-gathering process towards the 08 APSA Off-Road Championship trophies. But hold on to your hat. The waters are even further muddied by the fact that Foss and the Ford crew both boast a 100% finish record so far this season and thus they will have to drop one event from the overall tallies. Does it take off pressure or add to it? For their part, Krobler and Moore cannot afford another did not finish on their report card, like they did at their own event, the Nissan Sugar Belt 400 in KwaZulu-Natal. And just to put another span in the works, if you'll pardon the pun, all of the above-mentioned championship contenders and their crews will be all too aware of the severe threat posed by the two poised factory Castrol Toyotas, as if there wasn't enough pressure already. Rally and off-road star Mark Ronier and his co Chris Birkin have already won once this season and they, along with newcomer Anthony Taylor and veteran nav Robin Houghton, desire nothing more than to pick up a victory in a Toyota-sponsored event. If the two Castrol Toyota Hilux crews can see out the distance without any serious mishap, it may just be a second win in Leidenberg. And in the prestigious South African Manufacturers Championship, Toyota is trying their damnedest and plan to hold on to their lead. The Johannesburg-based team enjoys a 40-point lead over arch-rivals Nissan and the Toyota dealer 400 is certainly the ideal platform for Toyota to increase that margin. The Hiluxes have proved to be very reliable in 2008 and the addition of Taylor to the driver lineup has brought stability to the red, green and white liveried outfit under the guidance of manager Wami Haddad. The super production car class is ultra competitive and it's almost guaranteed the winner should come from the factory entries. Ivar Tollefsen and Quinn Evans in a third Sassel Nissan Navara could come into the reckoning. But contrast that to the depth of Toyota. They will be looking for top five finishes from Hichu and Jaup de Brain in the Mikurin XL dealer team Toyota who have been in exceptionally good form. Then there's the Castrol Toyota of the tenacious Chris Fisser, who is in car with Jarpi Bardnost. While the new kids on the block, Mike Tomset and Brian Haviland, have been impressive in the all-new Feltex Imperial Toyota Hilux. For Toyota, sheer weight of numbers is a plus factor in the manufacturer's title race. For the Ford squad, additional backup comes in the form of Kobus van Tonda and Rian Gropa, who have been models of consistency in the Unifreight Ford Ranger. 
And then there's Mark Ferguson and Craig West in a second factory entry who will be looking for a good result. Ferguson is currently 10th in the national title race. Back for Toyota and Chris Deploy and his navigator Evold von Rensburg will trot off the new RFS Toyota in its distinctive black and orange colours for only the second time. With a husband and wife team, George and Sharon Barkhausen and the Rocon Toyota have also improved in leaps and bounds in 08 right in the mix. And let's not forget about Yanku Swanepoel and Keith Solomon in the IDM cement entry who have been rock solid but will want to do some giant killing in Leidenberg. On to Class D and how this race has hotted up as the season has got older. Here the experienced brothers Henry and Maurice Matten in their red Ryobi Nissan hard body have just a 15 point cushion. But is that enough to sit comfortably? Because Kutsia Lobeskakhni and Johan Gerber in their race Sonics Nissan hard body will surely have other plans. Reigning Class D Drivers' Champion Cliff Weichelt and Nico Els in the N1 4x4 Toyota Hilux could certainly be a threat too. Granted, it's been a rather disappointing season for Weichelt, but a win would go a long way towards salvaging some pride. While the pride of Dalmas husband and wife team Ramon and Marit Besaidnot and the team Barber Spun Toyota Hilux are a further 20 points in arrears, quite frankly, nothing is settled in Class D. The Zermattens may or may not be the favourites, but it's tough to overcome their consistency. Henry leads the championship by 15 points, and after a rather dodgy start and some teething problems with the Nissan, they've picked up three good results in a row. They've got the hard body listening to them now. As for the side notes, Ramon and Moretta finished the last three races in a row after losing out in the Western and Eastern Cape, as well as KwaZulu-Natal, but they're learning all the time and should be there or thereabouts. A pocket calculator may be a handy accessory in Class E. The experienced Yanni Fissa and Yorks Larue have a tight hold on the Class E championship and the team Barber Spontiota Hilux Bear won't be looking to perform any heroics, but a solid finish and a rich haul of points will be their sole aim. The colourfully turned out Poch Plastics Toyota Hilux pairing of rookie Diewold van Breda and Johan de Toy will certainly fancy their chances for the same. While Jack Beckham and his trusty navigator Lucio Santoro and their Ford Racing Ranger will be looking to rescue what has been a rather disappointing 2008 on the off-road circuits of Southern Africa. Dion Fenta and Ian Palmer are probably still celebrating as the 4x4 Mega World Toyota team scored their first win on the recent Limpopo 400 and will be looking to produce a repeat performance of said win in Leidenberg. Like Beckham and Santoro, the Barden Tire Services Nissan pair of Thomas Rundle and Rob Howie will be keen to rescue something, actually anything, from a disappointing season so far, but in off-road, it's never too late. Leidenberg has great memories for the defending champion Foss. He did, after all, wrap up last year's title here, but there's no chance of that happening this time round. What is certain is that the Toyota Dealer 400 will go a long way towards deciding the ultimate destination of this year's overall and SP class championships. Foss leads by just six points, with a menacing stablemate Krobler poised to strike. Vehicle and asset finance from ABSA. Going from ABSA. Going off the beaten track to find solutions. Our preview of the Toyota Dealer 400, the penultimate round of the APSA Off-Road Championship, continues. And in the special vehicle category battle, it's been a season of two halves. The first part where it was even Stevens, and the second in which Shamir Varayawa bust loose with a vengeance. It's as tight as it can be coming down to the wire. And that's in the overall championship chase as well as the Class A National Crown Race. The Mpumalanga race and a good performance there is vital for those with any title hopes whatsoever. And what looked like a three-horse race has now suddenly seen several other crews come into late contention. Variawa has just a slender five-point margin over Kali Sobolt, who started off like a house on fire, but has not been as quick latterly. Another former champion, Terence Marsh, is only 12 points back, while Nick Harper, last year's runner-up, is also still in with a shot, provided he pulls off a win in Mpumalanga. With two fine mid-season wins and a long and arduous Toyota 1000 Desert Race and the next one, the Sun City 400, and then a consolidating second in the Limpopo 400, the total porter pair, former champion Shamir Varayawa and Siegfried Rousseau, have taken the lead in both the Drivers' and Navigators' Championships. But it's a tenuous lead and it's a fickle sport at the best of times.
The early pace setters, father and son pair Collie and Quinton Sulwalt in the Sulwalt Racing Bat, started off with a solid second in Darling and then a huge confidence boosting win in the second race of the season in the Eastern Cape. But they've been inconsistent since and have battled a litany of small but upsetting and rhythm breaking car problems. Lurking in third place, 05 champion Terence Marsh and the ever improving Peter Grunewald in the Regent Racing Bat will have the guns cocked and ready to blaze away. They espouse the smoothly and slowly approach, rather than a dash for glory all out charge, and this season it certainly worked out well for them. But just to add a little spice to these proceedings as well, Varyawa and Rousseau and the Sawalts still have to drop a result. So both crews have a 100% finish record this season, and having to drop one brings Marsh and Krinovot right back into the winning frame. Victory for Gary Bertolt and his navigator Andre from Mielin in the big turquoise Atlas Copco Porter, their second of the season on the Limpopo 400, has brought them straight back into the picture as well. And when Gary gets the bit between his teeth, he's one tough customer. Their teammate Nick Harper, partnered by his son Ryan in the second Atlas Copco bat, has admittedly not lately performed up to his own high standards, but he could still pull it off. The Harper combination is an interesting one. Dad Nick is as fit as can be, while Ryan is a former bike racer of the country and has an uncanny knack to read the terrain very well because of it. Ryan is sixth on the Navigator's points log. If anything, the slight advantage probably still lies with Variawa and Rousseau, who have now worked out how to get the porter to the line in one piece, while the Solvots and Marsh with Grunewald need a really good result to apply the pressure. But one wrong turn of the steering wheel at the wrong time, one misread of the road book, and the whole season can turn into naught. With dust almost a racing certainty on the seventh leg of the APSA Championship Series, this could very well turn into you first, no, you first scenario, as drivers may want to follow for as long as they can before they get a dust-free ride towards the end of the 400 Ks, when it really, really counts. With so much at stake, it could also be that the tactical new of each team will be tested to the limit and beyond. And there will also be the contrast in styles between the out-and-out chargers like Bertolt and Van Mielen, who can certainly make that big old porter sing along, and those with a slightly more conservative approach, such as Marsh, who bides his time and focuses on bringing the car home in one piece and scoring the points. It's been a while since there have been four crews in the hunt for the National Crown so late in the season, and it's a testimony to the hard work that teams have put into ensuring that their chargers and their steeds were in perfect working order from the word go. It's going to be a fascinating contest of sparring and looking for weaknesses. The leading South African championship contenders could, however, find themselves taking a back seat to a couple of other unfancied crews who could upset the best laid plans. Take, for instance, reigning champs Evan Hutchinson and Achim Bergman in the black and silver motorite bat, who certainly fall into this category. The two-time champ started off with a massive accident in the Western Cape and has been on the back foot ever since. Then there's Colin Matthews and Alan Smith in the multicolored century racing bat. They've now cracked three consecutive finishes and seem to have settled down as a combination. A win by a non-championship contender such as this could make it very difficult for the front runners to recover vitally needed points. Hutchinson and Bergman have had a dreadful season and a win would go a long way towards restoring a little pride for them. And the motorway team certainly need a late season fill-up. Mark Corbett and Rudy Balzar in the revolutionary second century racing properties car will be absolutely desperate for a win. It's a case of watch this space. Another region pairing to keep a beady eye on would be Mike Whitehouse and Matthew Carlson in the distinctive yellow and blue bat, and they too could come into the picture under the right circumstances. Then there's Herman Sulwalt and Paul Helberg in the all-new Sulwalt Racing Zarco, but since they debuted the big blue monster, they've had a non-finish, and their confidence could just be ebbing away at the late stage of the season. Roacon CEO and driver Peter Ruthven and his nav Deval Bosov are ninth on the championship log and will be trying to keep tabs on Sulwat, who's eight points ahead. How oh, they would love a late race surge and a massive passing maneuver that sticks to haul them up a few places. And it's not just the big engines where it's all to play for. There are some really interesting battles going on in Class B. Here again, just 12 points separate the top three drivers and only eight points are the difference between four title contenders amongst the co-drivers or navigators. Low de Brain in his Ruhrcon bat leads the Drivers' Championship class race with 76 points from veteran Gil Null and the Luke Africa Zarko Truggy, who is just nine points behind. A 
further. Three points back down the long, and you'll find Bez beside note in the silver and blue Adenko bat, and he will be chasing hard. And to complicate matters even further, just three points adrift is Johanda Brain, who co-drives with Pez beside note. He's tied on 64 points with Rudy Britz, who partners Lo De Brain in the Roacon car. The duo of Noel and De Kock certainly don't have the pace of the other frontrunners, but sheer consistency and dogged determination has kept them in a title race since the start in Darling's Dust in the Western Cape. Tudor Fuch, who this season has sat alongside both Hendrik and Young Cry in the Key Max Bat, leads the co-drivers' championship challenge for the national title. As you can surmise from the points difference, there's not a heck of a lot of breathing space either way. Also very capable of an upset in Class B is the Staffix electric fence racing pair of Mark de Chalain and Peter de Witt. De Chalain takes over the driving duties from Alistair Stubbs, who sits this race out with his wife scheduled to give birth over the weekend, and we wish them well. The sixth event on the calendar, the exhausting Limpopo 400, broke a log jam in Class P. Brothers Johan and Etienne Besaidnach in the Adenko Bat have logged down four consecutive finishes, and as a result, they now have a nine-point lead over another sibling pair, the brothers David and Gary White, in their trusty little Roacon Bat. The Sharks from KwaZulu-Natal, the two Dons, Don Thompson and Don Blakey, are further four points adrift in the Zarko. But they in turn have had two non-finishes in their last two outings and may be a little short on confidence right now. Their last non-finish on the Limpopo 400 hit Thompson and Blakey where it hurts most and they will be looking to bounce back in a big way. However, on a balance of probabilities, there's not much to choose between these three experienced crews, except perhaps for the fact that the White Brothers will be on a high after their Limpopo win and thus brimming with confidence. The old war horses Nick Gosler and Richard Carolyn firmly ensconced in their men's clinic international Zarko's yellow, white and black are out of the championship race, but could affect the fight going on between the three title contenders. The old story of two dogs in the bone with a third herring away with it eventually, or would that be a fourth? Richard Schilling, the defending champion, is not lining up, and that has certainly left the other crews sleeping a little easier at night. <laughs> As things stand, however, the special vehicle category will be a battle royale as the ABSA off-road championship season heads to a climatic finish. There's not a lot to choose from as far as form is concerned, and after all, the sport of off-road racing is tough on vehicle, body, mind, spirit and team. But what captures the soul of this sport so well is that competitors will, at the cost of their own championship hopes, stop to help another racer. Not too many other sports disciplines in which the spirit still exists. You'll certainly see it in action in Leidenberg. No doubt about it, the overall and Class A titles look set for a thrilling climax. There are high stakes on the Toyota dealer 400, and Shamir Varayawa knows that best of all. He only has a five-point lead. Expect the gloves to come off between 10 and 11 October. The prologue over a tough 75 long kilometers starts at 11 just outside Leidenberg, while the racing proper gets underway from Leidenberg Toyota on Saturday morning at 8 sharp. Make your way there, it should be great. Until we talk to you from there, you keep it on the road, we'll keep it off-road.